Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. I'm trying to fix this old telegraph. It doesn't work. Well, let's just say it sort of works. Sometimes. No, not really, because it doesn't send and it doesn't receive. And for a telegraph, what else is there? Noises. It makes plenty of noises. <coughs> oh, boy. See, I'm trying to fix it. There aren't many of these left on our railroad, and I'll be glad when they replace all of them. Can we help you fix it? Thanks for the offer, but I want to do this myself. What a racket. Listen, kids, I'm pretty busy here. You find something to do, okay? We just wanted to help. Maybe we could have fixed it. You weren't the problem. She was. What do you mean? Your Aunt Stacy is worried about whether she can fix the telegraph herself. And sometimes busy people just don't stop and think about what they're saying. You mean she wasn't mad at us? Exactly. Her mind was elsewhere. She wasn't paying any attention to you. But that's no reason to be upset. It's the sort of things friends learn to accept in each other. How about the engines on the island of Sodor? Are they the same way? Certainly. Remember when Gord made fun of Edward about the cows? I didn't tell you? Well... Edward was getting old, his bearings were worn, and he clanked as he puffed along. He was taking empty cattle cars to a market town. The sun shone, birds sang. But Edward was heading for trouble. Come on, come on, he puffed. Oh, 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 screamed the cars. Edward puffed and clanked. The cars rattled and screamed. Some cows were grazing nearby. They were not used to trains. The noise and smoke disturbed them. As Edward clanked by, they broke through the fence and ran across the line. A coupling was broken, and some cars were left behind. Edward felt a jerk, but didn't take much notice. He was used to cattle cars. Bother those cars, he thought. Why can't they come quietly? He was at the next station before either he or his driver realized what had happened. When Gordon and Henry heard about the accident, they laughed and boasted. Fancy allowing cows to break his train. They wouldn't dare do that to us. We'd show them. Old Toby was cross. You couldn't help it, Edward. They've never met cows. I have, and I know the trouble they are. Some days later, Gordon rushed through Edward's station. Poop, poop, find the cows. Hurry, 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 puffed Gordon. Don't make such a fuss, don't make such a fuss, grumbled his coaches. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Whoa, Gordon, he said and shut off steam. Oh, said Gordon, it's only a cow. Shoo, shoo. He moved slowly onto the bridge, but the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Moo, she said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. 
Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off, be off. Moo, said the cow. Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's conductor told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, looking for her mother. Percy will take her along. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word. Keep it dark, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running off against us. We stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. Sometimes Gordon thinks he's so great. Oh, that's just the way he is. It doesn't mean the other engines don't like him. Well, I'm off to play in the Dilly Lick Tennis Tournament. See you later. Oh, bye, bye. Oh, it still doesn't work. See, see what happens. Nothing. That's just the problem, Tanya. All I get is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, it's like if you had a telephone and it wouldn't give you a dial tone so you couldn't receive any calls. Well, I tried. Nobody's perfect. Maybe Harry will be able to fix it when he gets back. Why is the telegraph important? Well, it's how some of the train stations can talk to each other and talk to the dispatcher. And the way they talk to each other is really wonderful. It's uh, like a secret language, all dots and dashes. You know how your name would sound, Matt? And people can understand that? Yeah, all over the world. They have telegraphs on ships like this freighter. So every telegraph can talk to every other one, except for ours, because it's broken. Ah, good morning. You must be Miss Stacy Jones. How particularly beautiful you look to a man of my uh, utmost sense ativity. Uh, are you kidding? Kidding. Ha ha. H-A-H-A. -A -H -A. How droll and amusing and things of that nature. And you, you must be children. How wonderful. How would you like a super-duper telescope that you can look through with your very own eyes? Are you feeling okay, Schemer? Schemer? I've never heard of Schemer, although I do understand he's a wonderful fellow. Oh, and uh, here is that lovely item that I just forementioned recently. And uh, you, a woman of your high-classness, must be thinking to herself, Hey, how about a snack of some high-quality peanuts? Here. Be convenient at your leisure. Hi! Oh, that wasn't <laughs> funny, Schemer. <laughs> so, so what do you think, anyway, huh? About what? About what? About the the whole get-up, the whole new thing, my new concept, and my new, uh, this is my new marketing image. I'm like Fred Astaire, the great dancer, except that I'm in retail. I got a new line. The whole thing, uh, practical joke devices, novelty items. I'm telling you, they're a riot they can't miss. No, no, no. I never liked these things, Schemer. They can be very mean. Mean? Of course they're mean. Life is mean. That is what practical jokes are all about. Ah, what do you girls know? Hey, Matt. Matt, my man. Guy to guy. You know what is really funny? <laughs> you! You got a big black eye right around your eye like that when you looked into the, the, the joke telescope. <laughs> and now, is that funny or what? Yuck. Yuck? 
They say yuck to Henry Ford. Did they say yuck to Dwight D. Rockefeller? Do you know what the problem is with you people? You don't know what funny is. And that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> what a weird guy. I think he's super weird. Well, listen. Schemer may not be perfect, but uh, he's harmless. And when he comes around here, he usually makes us laugh. So we got to appreciate him for what he is. Do we have to? Well, when you get to know people, you got to take the bad right along with the good. Stacy's right, you know. The good thing about Scheme is when he has an idea, he's not afraid to charge your head and try it out. But he can be such a pain. <laughs> yeah, the bad thing about Schemer is he doesn't stop to think about how other people will feel about his ideas. So what are we supposed to do? Well, I think we're just going to have to put up with him. I must say, the practical jokes sometimes can be very silly. And other times they happen in the most unusual way. Why, I have a friend. Well, let me show you. Let's go down the anything tunnel. about trains. You never know who you're going to run into on one. And he decided to stop by and say hello. <laughs> Tom! Hi, <laughs> Harry. Tom Kellerman, my granddaughter Tanya. Hi, Tanya. The friend Matt. Hi, Matt. And Stacy Jones. Hi. Got to run things around here. Nice Hi. to meet you, Tom. Yeah. I've got bad news, uh, Harry. The telegraph won't work. Won't work? Sounds to me like it's broken. Well, you introduce yourself to Tanya and Matt, and I'll take a look at this thing. Okay, Harry. <laughs> 